Welcome to Conversations from St. Norbert College, a program that provides you with insight on social, political, and educational issues facing Northeast Wisconsin. Now, your host for Conversations from St. Norbert College, the Dean and Academic Vice President of the College, Michael Marsden. Good evening, my name is Michael Marsden, and I'm your host for this edition of Conversations from St. Norbert College. Our very special guest this evening is Dr. Jane Mull, President and CEO of the Bellin College of Nursing in Green Bay. And our topic this evening is the future of the nursing profession. Dr. Mull received a Bachelor's of Science degree in nursing from the University of Iowa, a Master of Education degree in teacher education and health occupations from the University of Georgia, a Master of Science degree in adult health nursing from South Dakota State University, and a PhD in higher education curriculum and instruction from the University of Iowa. Dr. Mull has been a faculty member and or an administrator at the University of Wisconsin Green Bay, the University of Iowa, and South Dakota State University. Jane, welcome to our program. Thank you, Mike. It's a pleasure to be with oh, you. We're, we're glad to have you with us. Thank um, you. As I reviewed your resume for the show, it was interesting how what a long and distinguished career that you've had in nursing um, at, at many levels. Um, I'm wondering what first drew you to the profession you know, as an individual, and then what sort of keeps you interested in the future of educating the next generation of nurses? Mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what drives you? That's a great question, Mike. And actually, as I think back, because it is getting longer and longer, this career, as <laughs> we are getting ready to celebrate the 40th anniversary of when I graduated from my baccalaureate nursing program. For me, though, Mike, it, um, there was no big life event that drew me into nursing. Rather, it was a challenge at that time as to where my family and uh, I were located about uh, me being one of those first-generation college graduates. I so I needed to work with my parents who really loved higher education but didn't have the opportunity themselves and vowed that their children would have the opportunity for a college education. So as my four siblings and I worked with our parents on that, for me it really was a challenge of selecting a university so I could have a college education and once I got there it was, I believe, the nurturing that I had done with my younger siblings, um, the curriculum at the University of Iowa that mm. drew me then into the nursing profession. So there was no big dramatic event. It was just sort of a natural process of this is really what I want to do. And that continues to drive me in that I had such wonderful experiences and a wonderful profession in nursing that to give back to the community, to other students, that's what drives me to stay in nursing education so that we do the best possible education. Um, therefore, patients will have the best possible care. Well, it's good that you have that continued enthusiasm for the profession. That's really interesting. Yeah. What's the history of the Bellum College of Nursing in particular? Because, as I understand it, it was started by Dr. Bellum. Yes, it was started by Dr. Bellum. I don't Julius know the whole Bellin. history, so I'm sort of interested in how it occurred. In a nutshell, um, back in 1908, Dr. Bellum started what is now Bellum Memorial Hospital. Mm -hmm. And he learned a year later that probably it would be good to have some well-educated nurses working in that hospital. So in 1909, he started the first nursing program that was actually called the Deaconess Sanitarium Training School for Nurses. My goodness. Three students were enrolled. <laughs> and so that continued from 1909 where the college, and actually it was a school at that time, was located in the attic of the hospital. In the attic. And um, in 19, about 1925, the name was changed from that Deaconess Sanitarium School to um, Bellin Memorial School of Nursing in honor of Dr. Bellin and that we were affiliated with the health system. That was a th what we call a three-year nursing program. Nurses well-educated received a degree, um, started taking their general education courses for a nice foundation, um, and it later then turned from this three-year diploma school. In 1983, a request was made that we look at having a collegiate baccalaureate nursing program. So in 1983, the Board of Nursing approved that. In 1989, the Higher Learning Commission approved the college to be a degree-granting degree institution. 
So we are now 98 years old, looking forward to our 100th anniversary in just two short years. I'm sure it'll be quite a celebration. Right. So, Dr. Bellum must have been an interesting individual. As I, the little I know about him, it seems like he was a real pioneer in uh, many aspects of healthcare. Yeah. I understand that he was, and I believe his innovation, you know, started then and has continued to be embellished in all that Bellin and the Bellin Health System continues to do. Yeah. Now we seem to have. Currently, a shortage of nurses on a national right. scale, but it almost seems like it's cyclical. You know, we have a shortage, and then we we fill the shortage, right. and then we have another shortage. Um, is it sort of an ongoing pattern uh, like that, or do you expect that it will level off at some point, and we will be able to create the supply and demand equilibrium that we would apparently need? That cyclical um, pattern has been with us, as you say, for for many 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 years. Not enough nurses, then too many nurses. Not enough, and it was a very uncertain profession uh, for people to actually get into. What we think is happening now is that the nursing shortage that we are currently just starting to get into is going to be with us for a very long period of time. Part of that is uh, because we don't have the capability of revving up and admitting a lot of new students into the profession for a lot of different reasons. Part of it is the burnout of um, the Which I nurses. want to talk about with you a little okay. bit later, but uh, I think it's a good question as well. Sure. To talk about. Um, but part of it also are just the opportunities and the demand for nurses in more areas than acute care hospitals. Mm -hmm nursing homes, the community, clinics, wherever you look. The military buildup. The military buildup is a huge, has a huge demand for nurses. So there are so many opportunities. That along with your and my hair graying a little bit, we yeah. know that the baby boomers. The 77 million baby boomers out there right, who are going to retire right, or are, are gonna, retiring. Are going to need some, <clears throat> probably more health care as we get older. We, we need more health care. Health care, illness care, but wellness care also to, to keep us as healthy as possible. And that's another role that nurses have gotten into, not just taking care of the sick, but helping with the wellness and preventing illness and disease. So there are so many opportunities that the prediction really is that that shortage of nursing nurses that you identified is only going to get worse instead of getting better. And the requirements have become uh, strengthened, exactly. which I think is, is also appropriate. But right. Now, in your case at the Bellin College of Nursing, my understanding is that you're intending to double at least your enrollment if you can. We're looking <clears throat> toward at least increasing our capacity. What we know now, Mike, is that um, for every student that we are able to accept, and we accept around 50 to 70 students in each of our classes, that we have an additional three or four applicants who are fully qualified that we're not no able to them. take care of because we don't have um, the space that will allow us to do that. Uh, so uh, we know, and, and our facilities are limited, so that we know that um, if we had additional space, we would be able to educate more nurses. And that is something that I think that we have, even though we're a private institution, we have a community focus sure. and, and believe in helping this community and the Northeast Wisconsin community and beyond um, to have an adequately prepared nurse force so that our health care is at the best it can yes. possible. Now, historically, the profession has been primarily a female profession, You're with right. some exceptions. I mean, there are right. some notable exceptions, actually. Um, but with, with some exceptions, it's been a female profession. And are you making any strides in, in, in either at Bellin College of Nursing or your colleagues nationally to yeah. recruit more men into the profession? That's a tough one. Um, that image out there of a nurse being in a white uniform and a white cap continues to be mm -hmm. pretty prominent. What we know now is that we have about 5 to 6 percent of the workforce is male. We have not been able to substantially change that percentage over the years, although there are different kinds of initiatives in place because we find that the men who do come into our profession are very successful mm -hmm. and love the profession. So whatever we can do, and, and whether it takes more education at a younger level for students, um, to think about nursing as a profession for for right. our male population, um, that that would be very helpful. Um, and I and I put that male category in kind of a diversity category because another one of our challenges is to have um, 
the nurse workforce reflect the general reflect population. the general public, and we don't currently have that as much as that we would like to here um, in the Green Bay area. Mm. So that's another one of our challenges. Mm. I've heard a lot of anecdotal, you know, uh, stories about uh, nurses uh, burning out in the profession. Yeah. Something we mentioned earlier, um, and in a, even in my own family, you know, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen this. My question, I guess, to you is: is is there something that 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 we can do within the curriculum? Um, or within the training of nurses to at least minimize that? I realize there are a lot of factors at play. One of right, them is right. shortage of nurses itself. Exactly. Um, hospitals cutting back on staffing and, mm -hmm. and all those issues. But how do you prepare someone for what is apparently a real issue in the profession? Burnout is a real issue. And you, you <laughs> talked about the curriculum or what kinds of things can we do. And, and I do think that education for our students about the realities of what is it really like to be a nurse. You know, you see some of these things on TV, they're pretty yeah. glamorous right. about what nurses can do, but for students to learn about what is it really like once you are working, uh, and to also work with our employing agencies to help them adjust to and, and help, help the nurses um, adjust, because one of the things that we do know, as you just indicated, most of nurses are female yes. and and it's it's not any different than men but they have a family life many of them have a community life their professional life and very often the nurturing that they need to do in other than their profession also has to drain them equally balance and, yeah. and drain them so whatever we can do to help with that balance because it is true we have um, nurses who leave the profession because it is just too stressful. Also, the physical work of nurses is often very draining, and their joints just Get burn off. out. Yeah. So awesome. their, their knees and their hips and lifting and all of that is, is a, a real problem. Mm. But I, I do think that uh, nursing education institutions and the facilities, the acute care facilities or wherever nurses work, working together to understand what do nurses really do? How can we do it? How can we do it better and, and support? And support them. Right. Give, them, give them the help they need. Right. just want to remind our, our uh, viewers that you're watching Conversations from St. Norbert College. Our special guest this evening is Dr. Jane Mull, uh, the President and CEO of Bellin College of Nursing. And we're talking about the many challenges that face the nursing profession today. Mm -hmm. We recently signed an agreement between your institution and, and uh, right. St. Norbert College, um, and you have a similar arrangement in place, I think, with the University of Wisconsin Green Bay. Um, and from our perspective, of course, I think this is a, a very positive move on right. uh, the part of both institutions. We, we will find that students will come now to St. Norbert College, even though they're Bellin College of Nursing students, they'll take their general education, their science courses here, mm -hmm. but they'll take their nurses, their nursing courses, their, their practicums and their, their clinicals, um, you know, with with Bellin. Um, but from your perspective, what are the advantages of what are the advantages of that kind of an arrangement, either with UWGB um, or with St. Norbert College? What does Bellin College of Nursing gain from that? Or those arrangements? Well, we gain so much. First of all, one of the really important things for nursing education is that they have a broad liberal education base. Mm -hmm. It's not just the nursing courses and what do you do in a particular situation. So to be able to partner with St. Norbert's College, as you mentioned, we just signed that agreement and right. the longstanding agreement that we've had with UWGB just facilitates such wonderful communication, gives the students a broad perspective of what happens on either one of those campuses and gives them the ammunition to work with a variety of um, different patients and different clients. But beyond the students, I also think that the faculty, the administration, we have another exciting opportunity to share ideas and to, to collaborate. And, to collaborate. Yeah. and so it, it feels like it's just a win-win situation that um, in this community that has been very good at cooperating and working with one another, that we can show through our educational institutions that we do that just as well, and mm. it, it just is better for the whole community. And if we can enhance the, the liberal arts foundation right. you know, for the students, um, this will ultimately make them better professional Absolutely. nurses. And Absolutely. And I think that's a positive, too, and it will make them better health care um, Absolutely. Providers. It really helps them critically think it's not that you can just prescribe to someone if you see these symptoms, 
this is what you do. Mm -hmm. They may see different kinds of symptoms, but with that broad liberal education base that you're going to be able to provide um, and UWGB provides in their courses, it helps students think on their feet. Yes. And that's what you and I want when oh, we're that yes. patient that they're taking care of. We want the best educated health care provider that's we can find. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Uh, it, it, could you project out for us what you see uh, the Bellin College of Nurses, uh, Nursing's future 10 years from now? How would you project it out in terms of what it might look like and, and what kinds of uh, goals you have for the institution? If that's, I hope that's a fair question. That's a fair question because we really do have a strategic plan in place. Number one, we do believe that we have found our niche, that the education of nursing or nurses is what we do the best. And so we see that we want to continue that. We see that there's a huge need for that. And so to partner with St. Norbert's College uh, is just one of those opportunities that will help us do that even better. We do have constraints now with our facilities so that we're only able to educate a limited number of students. I would like to see that grow to help meet the demands of what this community in Northeast Wisconsin actually really needs. And beyond that. And beyond that because, regions. yes, we... Um, people are mobile, and because they go to Bellin College of Nursing, they graduate from there, and they are able to go to any uh, facility that, that they want to actually sure. work at. They can at. find plenty of opportunities, Exactly. Sure. Yeah. Um, beyond that, we are, we are also looking at, uh, are there other areas in the health field that we would be able to um, provide expertise with in educating other types of health professionals in addition to nursing. So that's not out of the question, but you know, for right now it truly is. Road. Yeah. Now yeah. currently the arrangements that you have both with St. Norbert College and with the University of Wisconsin Green Bay um, are situated in such a way that the degree the students receive is a Bellin College of Nursing right. degree. Is it possible that down the road, four, five, six years down mm -hmm. the road, it may be possible that you could offer dual degrees, that the student who completed the course of study that both faculties had identified mm -hmm. as the appropriate mm -hmm. um, uh, course of study could receive degrees both from, let's say, St. Norbert College and the Bellin College of Nursing, assuming all the approvals were in right. place from all the, the governance structures and so on. We think that would be the most excellent way that we could go because, mm -hmm. as you identified, students take most half of their curriculum with St. Norbert College and mm -hmm. half of it in the nursing area. For them to be able to leave that educational experience and say, I have a diploma from St. Norbert's, which yes. is highly known, and from Bellin College of Nursing, which is also highly known for its nursing education, I think is a plus for those students and what they're able to sure. say to, to the rest of the world. But it also, I think, is, is the way that we need to be able to show that we really do work together and our faculties yes. work together. So yeah. a dual degree is just... That's that's one of the next steps, I believe, once we get this first part. Yeah, I think it's an exciting op opportunity. Once we have the, the agreement fully in place and right. it, it works itself out over, let's say, a four-year period, then we can look at that as a possibility. Ultimately. Sure. What do you see as some of the faculty collaboration possibilities between the two institutions? I, I just see that it's only held by a limited imagination of, of what they can actually talk about together, do together, some of the research kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Um, looking, uh, your faculty looking perhaps at some more clinical kinds of um, applications, our faculty looking at other ways that they can collaborate with your faculty mm -hmm. on um, teaching methods, on different kinds of things that they need to learn about their students, and just opportunities that we probably haven't even yeah. thought about well, yet. Well, one of the things, of course, we have a, a certain point of pride about here is the fact that our faculty engage our students here at a very big, at a very uh, early point in their career in research programs mm -hmm. and collaborative research programs, and so our faculty and students work yeah, together wonderful. very closely. And it seems to me that would be a really a, a significant advantage if we could expand that to it, the Bellin uh, College of Nursing students. It sounds um, and have some of your faculty work again with our faculty exactly in these kinds of collaborative arrangements. And so, in fact, every uh, every year we have an annual day of celebration where oh, we wonderful. get together and we, mm -hmm. we sort of showcase some of these collaborative efforts between faculty and some staff mm -hmm. and students mm -hmm. on not only um, traditional research but also creative activities wow. of various kinds in terms of uh, you know people working in their studios with students mm -hmm. as well as in their labs. So mm -hmm. I think it's exciting. I think that might yeah. be a really opp opportune way to go. Right. What do you think some of the most neglected areas of nursing education today are? Where, where are some gaps that need to be filled? 
I mean, one of them we talked about was perhaps better education about potential burnout in the profession. Correct. But beyond that, are there other areas that need to be filled in and, and uh, strengthened? Well, one of, one of the things that concerns me, because remember, I've been a nurse for almost 40 years, mm -hmm. with getting into the technology that is around us and has enhanced health care a great deal, one of the things I worry about is what is happening to that one-to-one -one relationship of the nurse with the patient and or the patient's family and what mm -hmm. can we do to strengthen um, those kinds of activities rather than walking into a room and looking at a dial and whether all of the drips are coming down yes. and all of those kinds of things so that we, so that we don't lose that personal touch mm -hmm. that needs to occur. Um, we talked about burnout before, but one of the things on nurses working in clinical areas also happens to faculty, and that's one of the areas that we have another shortage of is a lack of faculty who are positioned that they can educate nurses. Yes. So I see that that is another area that we really need to address okay. or we're going to run into some difficulties because we won't have the people who can teach the aspiring nurses. I assume another area, too, is some of the ethical and moral issues Absolutely. that continue to really um, a challenge us because, Absolutely. I mean, every time we come up with a new procedure or right. a, new, uh, a new way of, um, you know, altering our life patterns and so on, right. there are all sorts of ethical issues there that are. play there. there and are. how do we educate health care providers to be ethicists? You yeah. know, that's a very serious very question. Serious. It absolutely I, is. I was hoping, for example, in, in, in uh, our collaborative experience here that we might be able to uh, build uh, ethics more directly into the curriculum. You know, that sounds like an excellent idea. And and as you say, with all of the advances that are happening in healthcare, it certainly will raise our awareness of yes. how do we address these kinds of things and some basics in, in yeah. that area is important. Um, what do you think some of the most important changes um, have, that have occurred in the education of nurses from the beginning of the Bellin College of Nursing to the present. I mean, we've got a 98-year history there. 98-year history. And how would you characterize some of the most significant changes in that educational process? I mean, from when Dr. Bellin started to educate um, nurses to the present and, mm -hmm. and how you now educate nurses. You know, and I think at the beginning it was very much that one-on-one -on -one kind of thing when you start with only three students. So tutorial almost. So it was almost tutorial. And, and now with accreditation mm -hmm. standards so that we can actually say to the world that we have a, a curriculum that is acceptable to the public so that when someone graduates from this program they will be a safe practitioner with their license. Um, that the curriculum has needed to evolve from um, this is how we do it this time to the broad-based thinking with a collegiate education so that uh, people can think on their feet and that way do the best possible care that, that they really can. So we've moved from a one-on-one, -on -one, this is what you do in this instance kind of thing, into a collegiate education of thinking things through, um, knowing when to be concerned or when to rejoice or whatever, and, and moving into um, a, a collegiate thinking about the profession as opposed to a a technical thinking about I can just do this task this and this task and this right. task. More of a team right. member rather than just you exactly. know, a person who is uh, directed to do certain kinds right. of things at that point. That's, a, that's an important distinction. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at you know, some of the challenges you know, facing the nursing profession today, I think one of them may well be the image of the nurse. Now you that's talk true. about the image of the nurse as being glamorous on television to some extent, but our society I think, and I've said this before when I in terms of, for example, why more people aren't going into the teaching profession. Mm -hmm. Well, to some extent, that's our our society's mm -hmm. problem because we don't uh, we don't give it the kind of respect that it's due. Mm -hmm. um, is this an issue for the nursing profession that we need to provide more respect for the profession and get the public to really value it more? Is that a challenge? I I, I think it's a challenge, and yet uh, there also has been a statement out there. The Gallup poll for the last five years has identified that the public has n identified nursing as the number one profession that they have the most trust in, That's that they are the most ethical yeah. one. And so, so in some respect... Above respects, doctors. Above doctors. Uh, we are the highest, actually. I, I assume the AMA has not promulgated that. They probably have not. They have not. The Gallup poll has been putting it out there. So, 
so in many respects, the, the public is already quite already supportive of, of nursing and nurses. So, um, but, but whatever we can do to ensure that that image um, remains um, worthy of the trust is what we really need to, to mm -hmm. work toward. Just This is kind of a personal question, but um, I mean, all of us, I think, for example, who began our careers, in my case, as a, as a faculty member and then moved into administration, at some point in my life, I've always at least uh, fantasized about going back to the classroom. Mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe mm -hmm. I will. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever fantasize about going back to the nursing profession and begin to practice it once again. I noticed from your resume you've kept your licenses current in two states. Right. And it must right. be for a reason. <laughs> well, uh, partly uh, um, I, I like to be able to say to people that I work with that you have a license. That I have a license. I know where you're coming from. And, and even though I don't mm -hmm. need a nursing license in my current position, yeah. um, faculty need a, a current license. So if I would go back to teaching in the classroom, then, you would need the current license. then I would need the current license. And um, actually it was teaching that really got me turned on to um, being in the nursing profession early on um, because in that, in that arena what you get to do is be with the students in the classroom but also be with them at the bedside yes. with patients. And so it just joins what I think are the two most important pieces of um, teaching students and teaching patients and taking care of them. So. I, I probably don't see myself ever going back to the actual as being practice at, of nursing. Right. I, I, I think that I probably, um, well, I would need a good remedial course before <laughs> I did that again because so much technology has That's occurred changed. since That's then. Changed. Right. But it still is where the profession. No, is, that's the heart and soul of the that profession. Is, that is right. And I think you're correct. And one of the things that's nice about the nursing programs as they have evolved is they have evolved with that clinical component yes. front and center. Yes. And so you're forced to deal you know, on a day-to-day -day right. basis with the realities of the profession right. as yes, opposed sir. to the theory of the profession. I right. remember in my previous position um, in Kentucky, I actually shadowed uh, at okay. least for a morning, mm -hmm. you know, uh, one of the uh, uh, the nurses who was on the faculty at the institution and who also ran the clinical program mm -hmm. at the local children's hospital, and that was quite a remarkable experience to follow her around and, right. and, and to listen to her concerns as well as watch the way she interacted with the students right. and corrected the students and right. so on. But, um, right. So I think it's, uh, you know, nursing is a, a marvelous profession, and I think all we can do to enhance it is probably in our collective best interest as a society, but mm -hmm. certainly for the two institutions that we exactly. represent, very important for the future. Yeah. Right. Um, are there any other things you'd like to at least share with us about your thoughts on the nursing profession, things we haven't covered that you'd like to add? Actually, I, I think you've walked <laughs> us through a great many of things. I guess what I would add, though, Mike, is that um, it truly is a wonderful profession. No matter where you are, uh, what where life takes you um, to live or, it's or to do. It's a portable profession. It's a sense. portable profession. And um, as much as people need you, it really gives back also to the nurse who is giving the care uh, so much to help you feel good about yourself, but also to know that you are giving to that patient and yes. that family and that community. Yeah. That is, a, I'm sure, a very very satisfying feeling. Mm -hmm. so. I'd like to thank our special guest this evening, Dr. Jane Mull, for sharing her expertise and her insights with us. Please join us for future programs as we continue our exploration of the world of ideas. Until then, I'm Michael Marsden for Conversations from St. Norbert College.